Hi guys, welcome to The Daily Nilu, a daily show to help you tap into that inner peace, choose love over fear, and live from inspired action. Today, I want to share with you a podcast episode by Michael Stone from his podcast, Awaken the World, that I heard last year, and I absolutely loved it. I resonated with it. I listened to it multiple times, and he talks about how to apply the tools of mindfulness and meditation to a large spectrum of mental health conditions, uh, covering from bipolar to multiple personality disorder, to depression, to uh, a schizoid personality. He also covers narcissism. I heard this last year and it really hit home for me. Michael himself has since passed away. He passed away in 2017. Uh, I believe his death, his passing is a little bit controversial. Uh, I don't want to get into that, uh, but you know, if you want to read about him, uh, go ahead. He was a Buddhist teacher and his podcast is amazing. Uh, I've heard a couple episodes, this one in particular, uh, very dense, uh, very informative. He does such a wonderful job of kind of breaking down these mental health um, conditions and how tools like mindfulness and meditation can be applied to help improve and accelerate your healing process, but also what to look out for. And for me, something I learned through practice the hard way is uh, when I was in a deep state of depression, meditation was actually not good for me. And uh, I realized this one day when I was trying to keep up my meditation practice while in a very, very deep state of depression, uh, having suicidal ideation, completely isolating myself from the outside world. I had lost a ton of weight. Uh, when I get depressed, I lose weight because I lose my appetite. And for me, it hit on something that I personally experienced um, during a state of depression. Uh, and he just confirmed it for me. He affirmed it with some science that uh, can back up what I already experienced myself. So in particular, I want to talk about meditation and depression. I was trying to practice self-care and I associate daily meditation as part of that self-care, as part of a daily routine. So I sat for about 15 minutes for a meditation, uh, not guided, it was just to some uh, ambient music and also a candle being lit. And I sat and I ruminated on my thoughts over and over again. And it was very scary because the thoughts I was ruminating on, the thoughts I was meditating on were not um, helpful to me. They were actually working against me. And you can even say dangerous for me is because I had allowed my energy, my vibration, my emotions to go down this uh, downward spiral. I had let the momentum build up, build up in a downward spiral. If you're familiar with the emotional guidance scale, which Abraham Hicks talks about a lot, you know, I was going from pessimism to frustration, to overwhelmment, to disappointment, blame, anger, revenge, hatred, jealousy, insecurity, guilt, unworthiness, fear, grief, depression. So I had already allowed it. By the time I hit that bottom point of depression, of victimization, of feeling really powerless, just wanting to end it all, wanting to hit the escape button and just get the heck out of here, uh, that was not a good time for me to meditate because the momentum had built up so much in that downward spiral. I had absolutely no discipline over my thoughts and or my emotions, which were being triggered by my thoughts. And so when I sat to meditate, instead of doing what I do in a healthy state, in a positive state, in an upward spiral state, even in a neutral state of allowing just to observe the thoughts and allowing them pass and bringing my attention to my breath, I was being sucked into those thoughts and those thoughts were not positive. Those thoughts were suicidal ideations. Those thoughts were um, unworthiness, self-loathing, uh, replaying scenarios over and over in my head. In those moments, meditation was actually harmful for me. 
because I was not in a mental disciplined state of mind. So what did help me in that state? Because when I realized, and I was healthy enough, I was sane enough, I had enough of a connection to reality that I could recognize, oh, this is not good for me. Like I am basically marinating my thoughts in depression and unworthiness and rage and guilt. So what helped me was moving my body, right? And I, I addressed this in that episode I did with my sister about the benefits beyond the physical for working out. So my sister, one of my friends, they said, you just need to move your body as much as you don't want to get out of bed, as much as you don't want to go for a walk or go for a hike, move your body, get out of your head. So I started to do that. And uh, I started to really forced myself to just get out of the house get some fresh air and it took some time to bring that train that momentum to a halt and then start to kind of backpedal and go towards the positive and once i was able to get on that upward spiral that forward moving momentum in a positive direction in a self-loving direction that's when I reincorporated meditation back into my self-care practice. And, um, you know, this was something that I didn't like do any scientific research on. It's just something I got to experience and understand. And I started sharing with it, sharing about it with people I talked to once I did get, get healthy. And when I would talk to people in a state of depression, I would try to gauge, you know, where they are at and whether or not I could really recommend meditation to them. And then I stumbled upon this amazing podcast. My friend Layla sent it to me and it just reiterated, re it affirmed what I already got to uh, experience and understand through practice. And he talks about what I experience when he addresses depression and so much more. So I want you guys to listen to this. I cannot do it justice and summarize it for you something you should really listen to put aside some time on a long drive or when you're home cooking or something or you have some free bandwidth to really listen so as you're listening to this if um it's resonating if it's hitting home uh feel free to privately message me if you don't feel want to feel comfortable writing a comment i know not everyone is as open to share about their vulnerable states as i am so feel free uh, to message me privately. I'm happy to talk to you about this further. I highly recommend you listen to this episode. I don't recommend a lot of podcasts, but this is one I think everyone should listen to because as he's describing the different mental health conditions, many of us, I, it's hard to say all of us because nothing is so black and white, but many of us have at some point in our life experienced one or more of these to some level to some degree so i think there's something for everyone to learn here and if it's not you going through it you probably have a loved one who's going through it so listening to this understanding the state of mind that your loved one is in you know when someone is in a deep depression and just saying get over it it's not going to happen right so this will also allow you to speak to them with more empathy and also um equip you with tools to share with them even if you share the episode the podcast episode uh, it is a tool for them to listen to and when they are in enough of a frequency to attract a healing path they'll hear you if you tell them about something like this and they dismiss it don't take it personal because like i said they're probably so far down that downward downward spiral that it's not going to resonate it's not going to hit home it's going to go over their head at that point they just need to do something to bring that momentum to a stop the negative momentum to a stop get to a neutral state and then they'll be more open to hearing about and talking about healing opportunities that's what i wanted to share with you guys tonight i will link the podcast that i'm referring to by michael stone in the captions of this video so be sure to check it out and I'll talk to you tomorrow.